we're starting video four. And video four will be just a quick summary um, on other musculoskeletal associated tissue. So in video one and two we spoke about we spoke about bone. Video three we spoke about cartridge, and now we're going to video four, which will speak about other associated musculoskeletal uh, tissue. So the first one will speak about periosteum. You can look at periosteum and consider it as part of bone, or it's the fibrous covering of bone, right? So this is a cortex of bone, and we can see that this is bone because it's homogeneous pink material over here. But just on the outer side of it, we have this fibrous tissue. And compare the fibrous tissue color compared to the bone matrix. Bone matrix is very homogeneous, dark pink material, while fibrous tissue is much paler. And um, you can see a lot of cells uh, in between it, which represent the fibroblasts. So the fibroblasts are those spindle or straight, short, straight line uh, nuclei that's very flattened, embedded between the fibrous um, uh, collagen, uh, the, the collagen fibers, uh, the collagen fibers in the fibrous tissue. So very cellular, no spaces, no lacuna, right? And the degree of stain. So that's the periosteum. So, so the periosteum is formed of an outer fibrous, fibrous layer and an inner more cellular layer, and the inner more cellular layer have a stem cells from which um, under stimuli um, can differentiate into uh, osteoblasts and start to populate uh, the area where we need uh, the bone formation. The second element is the uh, joint cavity. So the joint cavity is lined by uh, cells. These cells, we call them epithelial cells because they are plump and big. Um, the um, um, articular uh, cavity is lined by um, these synoviocytes. They are of type A and B. Type A is this big uh, cells with a lot of pink cytoplasm. The nucleus is rounded, and type B is the very flattened cells just squashed underneath of them. The function of synoviocytes is to secrete the synovial uh, fluid, which is important for lubrication uh, of uh, the movement. Um, so between the two bones, you need the fluid to have this replication, but also it's responsible for um, uh, bringing nutrients, nutrients into the cartridge. Cartridge doesn't have any blood vessels. So cartridge in children and adults, I'm not speaking about fetuses, but in children and adults doesn't have any blood vessels inside. And the only source for uh, nutrients for this uh, cartridge is through diffusion from the synovial fluid. So synovial fluid and synoviocytes, which secrete the synovial fluids, are very important to keep a healthy cartridge. Underneath the synoviocytes, there is connective tissue, like loose fibrous tissue. So you can see the short uh, nuclei of the fibrous tissue, the collagen fiber, right? And there are some blood vessels. We can identify the blood vessels because we have the red blood cells, as I'm highlighting here and here, right? We can even have nerves inside the uh, connective tissue over there. Um, and... Uh, that what forms the lining of um, the uh, joint. The other component we keep in mind is um, as a musculoskeletal system is muscles. And the muscles associated with bone is skeletal muscles. And what characterizes skeletal muscles compared to any other type of muscles? So we have something called smooth muscle which is responsible for this involuntary movement. And it's really associated with the gastrointestinal tract, for example, with peristalsis or the heart muscles. The most important characteristic for skeletal muscle is striations. So when we look at the skeletal muscle, as we can see on the left-hand side of the picture, there is light and dark staining to the muscle. So we can see uh, dark and light staining to the muscle. Right, and this represents the presence of the uh, um, uh, 
uh, fibers inside the muscle, which we call it actin and myosin. And what happens is that the uh, myosin is uh, dark stained because it's heavy chain, and the light chain, the actin, they glide on each other, leading to shortening of the muscle. The other characteristic of the muscle is that the nuclei inside the mature, inside a muscle cell that we are seeing in a child or in an adult, but not in fetus, the nucleus is at the surface, just at the um, underneath the cell membrane. It doesn't go in the middle of the cytoplasm, it's just on, under the surface. You can say how this is a skeletal muscle on the left side picture and on the right side picture. They are both skeletal muscle, yes, but they look different. The reason for that, because one of them is cut longitudinal, so cut transverse, so you're seeing along the length of uh, the muscle fiber. The other one on the right picture, the muscle fibers are cut transverse, so you're looking at the TS uh, sections of the muscles. One uh, thing characteristic of the muscle is that it's very pink. It's very pink in color. It has striations, remember? But very pink, almost same color as bone. And the reason why muscle is pink because it contains myoglobin, which is a protein, and like collagen, uh, proteins tend to acquire the red uh, staining on our stain or dye that we use in pathology. So it's because the rich content of myoglobin. This next image is from a tendon or an aponeurosis. In this case, it's from aponeurosis. Tendon and aponeurosis, I cannot tell the difference microscopically. So if you give me a tissue under the microscope, I cannot. Of course, from anatomy, you can tell. They are characterized by being formed of fibrous tissue. So we can see this collagen, wavy collagen fibers, and those squash cells in between, which represent fibroblasts. And I put here a blue uh, um, curve just to show you that the fibroblasts really go in waves with the collagen fiber inside the tendons and the aponeurosis. As we stated before, that collagen fibers have the ability to refractile and reflect uh, light using polarizer microscopy, and I'm showing the wavy arrangement of the collagen fiber in the lower image using polarizable microscopy, and I'm highlighting with these two white arrows the uh, refractile lines, how they are somehow parallel, although they remind me with, as if they are waves next door to each other. Um, um, uh, for arrangement of their collagen fiber. And this arrangement, this specific arrangement, make the tendon or the aponeurosis very tensile and strong because you push on it as we move uh, right, but it's still hard and sturdy and able not uh, to break or tear. This is a picture at the junction between the tendon and the bone. So it's at the cortex of the bone where the muscle ended and then we're having a tendon and it's attaching to the bone. And this represent, this site represents the weakest, uh, one of the weakest portion of the tendon. And this, uh, um, because it's weak, it's liable to get injury. We can see that the collagen fibers in the tendon, they change to become first woven bone and then cortical bone. 